Hey guys, this is part two of the roles and responsibilities of an ISO, otherwise known as an Information Systems Security Officer. If you haven't checked out part one, please go ahead and do so. Enjoy. Another thing that an ISO does is review the SAR. The SAR is the Security Assessment Report, and this is provided by the Security Control Assessor to the ISO and project team, letting you know um, what failed during the assessment. So it's kind of like a report card. Um, so the ISO is responsible for going over that um, list of findings and relaying it back to the project team, which is the admins, to try to remediate those findings. Participating in authorizations. The ISO is responsible, in most cases, for briefing the um, authorizing officials. In some organizations, they have security managers who do this, and then the ISO briefs the security manager, and then the security manager briefs or briefs um, the um, authorizing officials. But for the most part, the ISO will do this. ISO, he or she would go to a meeting, um, will have people at the table the authori authorizing official will request for the um, security authorization package and then the ISO briefs the AO on the risk posture of the system. Briefings, I just covered that. So you brief, not only do you brief the AO, you brief the system owner and uh, CISO and other stakeholders. Continuous monitoring. This is a stage after you get your authorization. So we want to make sure that after your system or application has been authorized, you you or your um, pr the project team continues with the upkeep of the system, making sure that the system still maintains um, a level of security. So you're doing that this by um, continuous uh, vulnerability scans and then also having a schedule where a subset of security controls is tested by the uh, security control assessor. Reviewing, developing, and maintaining the SSP. The SSP is the system security plan and this contains every um, security relevant information uh, that pertains to your system. So it's got the where the location, um, the environment, the diagrams, the security controls, um, who the system owner is, who the authorizing official is, the ATO date, and um, things of that nature. Participating in audits. So there's a difference between assessments and audits. Audits are usually performed by um, third party agencies or organizations. So you've got um, GAO, for example, that comes to uh, your site and says, hey, let me take a look at your SSP. Let me take a look at this just to make sure that you guys are doing the right thing. Providing security guidance. This is something you would do um, on a daily basis is consider yourself an ambassador for the security department to your client. So you're like an ambassador slash lawyer. You're supposed to know your policies and you're supposed to know compliance. Um, so a typical example would be, hey, we're trying to 
upgrade this or we're trying to migrate this system to a different environment um, is that okay uh, and then you will come back and provide guidance or feedback saying hey it's okay for you guys to migrate to this environment but uh, you might lose some of the security controls that um, you were afforded when you were in this environment and going to the other environment you will lose them or you might gain some more or this might need to be done you know so that's a typical um, uh, task as an ISO reviewing documentation this is another typical task of an ISO you review security documentation or you review um, system architecture uh, documentation the SSP and um, let me see policy documentation SOPs decommissioning system applications for everything in life there is a beginning an in initiation phase and there is a decommissioning phase so when a system has ran its course um, it's time to decommission that system because you don't want to be responsible for uh, providing security to a system that is not being in use it's a waste of money and time and effort and resources so you're res you'll be um, responsible for um, participating in the, the decommissioning of that system reviewing risk acceptance a risk acceptance is something that is done by the authorizing official so if there's a risk that the authorizing official feels that he or she is willing to accept they'll go ahead and sign off on a document that outlines what that risk is the impact the business justification and um, the reason why they feel it should be uh, risk accepted. Remember with security and risk, you can't prevent every risk. Uh, you could only reduce the risk to an acceptable level. Reviewing slash research and vulnerabilities. Um, this is usually done by um, running a scan uh, using something like Tenable Nessus or WebInspect and getting the scan report or scan results um, most of the time you'll see the um, vulnerability ID and you'll see what the risk is the fix everything is going to be on that report um, so the ISO and project team will be able to um, find the solution to the findings but as an ISO you need to do your own homework you need to go to Google YouTube um, research what those vulnerabilities are research what the fixes are yourself um, so you could uh, speak intelligently to um, any of the stakeholders regarding those vulnerabilities Participating in penetration testing. Penetration testing is something that's performed to kind of mimic what an attacker would do. So what a hacker would do um, on your network or to your system. So as an ISO, your job is to make sure that the um, right um, document is provided, the rules of engagement document is provided. Um, making sure that you do your preliminary um, work so it is the system and externally facing system um, has the system owner signed off on it um, have you done like a uh, low-hanging fruit scan first before you bring um, third-party pen testers to pen test that system um, audit log review audit log review is basically getting um, the logs of your system so for most systems every event that it that takes place gets recorded into logs um, 
if the system itself does not have a native um, uh, maybe let me rephrase that if the system itself has a way of capturing those logs um, but does not have fancy ways of um, kind of interpreting those logs then you could use other tools like Splunk to help you um, with that so the the user the person who's accessing the system or object needs to be recorded um, the time the environment uh, the server name so all that information is taken in and reviewed to, to check for malicious activity reviewing inventory um, if you don't know what you have how can you secure it so your inventory would be um, a list of systems IP addresses and things of that nature Updating and developing documentation. There's so much uh, documentation to develop and review. Um, and this is going to be part of your job to update uh, and maintain those documentation. Conduct an account review. So similar to the log review, you want to make, keep track of any uh, privileged user um, list. So admins, people who have special um, rights and permissions and you want to try to keep track of what they're doing and who should be allowed to have certain um, permissions generating risk reports and executive summaries so your risk report will be a report that has um, a risk score or um, outlines the types of risk that are associated with the system and your executive summary is a summary of the security posture that you present to a um, either system owner or authorizing official so they can make a, an informed decision decision making as a uh, security professional you would have to make sound security decisions. So there's um, a decision matrix that I've created and I'll share with you on another slide. Sending reports and updates via emails. This is critical because you wanna make sure that you have a track record of what it is you're doing and what it is um, your client is saying regarding something okay because sometimes they'll have that amnesia and claim that not to remember something and in a nutshell those are the responsibilities and daily tasks of an ISA. hey if you're interested in any of my cybersecurity videos here is one i would recommend for you it's the information system security officer training this course comes with tons of videos uh, a CAP, which is the Certified Authorization Professional Boot Camp, comes with quizzes, comes with a certificate of completion, resume template, um, ebook, monthly live Q&A sessions, the ability to ask questions as well and get a response back in uh, 48 hours. Also has interview prep and job prep. So this is a power packed course. For more information, visit www.cyberfirstacademy.com. Thanks. Don't forget to subscribe and like. We're also on IG at Cyber First Solutions. Thank you.